Welcome to the Love That Guy podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Ronnie Jean Blevins. And this is Brendan Reynolds. He got third all for Billy at the end of each picture. That don't really mean much. He would say with a grin. But he held my hand tight. When he pawned his name out, only four or five names down below Errol Flynn. We are the show that celebrates the journeyman actors, the actors we all know and love. And even though we might not always know their names, we inevitably see them in film and television and think to ourselves, love that guy. Brendan. Hey, how you doing, Bubba? Good man. That was another, other great one with Rick. He's a seems like a spiritual, talented guy. Yeah, man. We we had Rick Gonzalez on the show that you know, I I, I think I first noticed probably in and um in the rookie and old school, and then you know as the you know the the one of the funny fraternity members, and then year, a couple of years later when I'd see him do, yeah. Pride and Glory, we spoke about on the on the show, and he was playing this kind of vicious little. Like uh, like a sneak in the grass, you know. Um, it's he's he's good, man. He's great. He's great, and uh, uh, you know, yeah. When I talk, I, I, I whenever I go to work on something, I'll look at the call sheet and say, okay, who's uh, who who's the fan in me gonna like connect up to on this one? And and when I went to do organized crime a couple of years ago, it was Rick. I was like, oh, dude, you know. Did you have a few scenes with him? Um. I think that we had like I, not directly actually, but we we're you know you know they're all intertwined. You know he was probably hot on my trail at one time. You know <laughs> the bad guy. You know, um, and then I go into this. Say it again. Had a lot of range. I was I'm just you know looking at his yeah. work. Yeah, he's amazing. But he like you said he can get in the nitty gritty with the drama. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and 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 I always I always love these shows because it and I, I know I've said this before, but it, it feels like it makes like you're, in life you're always thinking about the past or future tripping, right? But the, and this this podcast we do it kind of forces us to just live inside of this hour, you know, um, and it always feels good after I I after we do this show, you know, um, and uh, you know, say it again. It was insightful somehow. It was I was learned something. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but Rick Gonzalez is our guest, guys, and uh, it, you know I'm sure you'll know him from just uh, like I said, decades of of, of stuff. And um, and I felt I think we felt really honored to have him on. Um, and I hope you enjoy it, and we hope that you'll like and subscribe and all that good shit. Thanks for listening. All right. Today's guest puts a smile on my face every time I see him on my screen. It's likely because of the spectrum of his talent and has floored me both comedically and dramatically throughout the years. After graduating from the LaGuardia School of Performing Arts in 1997, he started working fairly quickly. In 2002, he played Rudy Bonilla in The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. I actually saw that in movie theaters. Then it was just like this rapid fire of films, old school, Biker Boys, Coach Carter, War of the Worlds. Uh, and that one, guys, what is that one with uh, Guest, David Guest, Chris Guest? God, I love that one. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. It'll come uh, to us. I forgot. <laughs> I'm in the middle of our damn uh, thing, and I just, I'm just ripping on this guy. I just keep thinking of you as the VJ and the dude right. saying, oh, all for pre <laughs> That, every time I watch that scene, it makes me laugh out loud. Um, and then he went on to do 76 episodes of Arrow, kind of solidifying his space and TV. And he's been off to the races ever since in that realm. Uh, he spent the last few years playing Bobby Reyes and Law and Order Organized Crime, which is where I had the uh, good fortune of meeting him. Welcome to the show, the quintessential artist, Rick Gonzalez. How's it going, oh, man? Yeah. That's that's an amazing intro. Thank you, man. 
You're welcome, and man. I, and I made it complete by forgetting what I worked on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I I think uh, I I do think about that scene, and and it's called uh, uh, for your consideration. For your consideration, there oh, yeah. it is. Yes, uh, Brendan, have you ever seen that man? Uh, it, it, yeah, so funny. And there's this scene where Rick's in there, and he plays like this, like. Which choice VJ and like you know, and then yeah. uh, Harry Shearer's character is doing this like uh, <laughs> this kind of like this He's, yeah this this publicity uh, stint is trying to like you know re get reach for his his uh, kind of delusional reach for like some sort of award yeah. like Oscar yeah. or Golden Glove yeah, exactly. <laughs> So he's like, he's going, I'm like, <laughs> I just it's like, it's like, what did, I forgot? I told him, I, uh, I know, uh, Christopher Guest was like, think of like, you know, you're expecting this movie that he's going to talk about is like a Tom Cruise film, right? Yeah. So it's like, it, there's explosions, right? And he's like, yeah, no, there is explosions of like emotions and like, <laughs> and, and, you know, explosions of, you know, conversations you know uh <laughs> which is kind of brilliant because it kind of also is like a, a comment on the complete like awkward nature of of like uh pushes like that you know even like uh, red carpets i always feel like god i always like feel like an imposter <laughs> you know? like what am i doing here it's actually it some was, memorial it was uh it was perfectly planned improvisation like because like the the notion of like just keep trying to prod him of like where the action is in this film yeah, yeah. um yeah, left me kind of stumped every time he returned fire at me you know <laughs> I'm, yeah man. i was like it's yeah. just it's perfect like in terms of like i don't know what to say right now yeah, yeah. i'm gonna keep going you know yeah uh, so yeah it was it was pretty good that, yeah, that was man. i uh uh you know i think like I said in the intro, um, that you know, we met uh, a couple of years back on organized crime when I come in and did a, a guest star on that, you know, and I feel like oftentimes in the movie space, it's the the directors that really kind of uh, create the culture, you know, right. and I think that and um, in the TV space, I feel like it's the series regulars that kind of create the culture. Mm -hmm. And um, I think with like with guys like you and, and Chris Maloney, um, I found that culture to be really, really cool, man. Really like, it, um, really, and I'm sure maybe some of that could, you know, could, could be attributed to the fact that it, it it's not been going for 15 years, you know what I mean? But you yeah. guys were like kind and exciting and ingratiating, um, you know, and, and I, but I'm convinced that a lot of that is just because it, you have cool people at, at the uh, top of the call sheet, like you and Chris and, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I, it that was a really good experience for me, man. Thanks, and, man. Thanks. and yeah. you are you and you were super cool and um, yeah, I felt like you know the camaraderie in terms of like the group they put together for our story arc, you know, for that episode arc. Yeah, um, nice and uh, yeah, man. I think like it's it's lovely to like connect with you know other thespians and actors who are like, you know, yeah. I respect the journey and the process of it all. And we see each other in that sort of marathon of like going after, um, you know, this thing that we love, you know, and uh, it, it can feel like you're in the trenches sometimes. So when you see folks that are like, you know, uh, on the same journey, man, it, 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 you can sigh with each other and just be like, I, right, I, yeah. I see you, man, you know? That's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, man. And I also kind of like whenever I'm going to work on something new, I'll, I'll look at the call sheet and say, OK, who's like who can like, you know, the the kid and the fan in me. And, and I remember looking at those. Oh, fuck, I, I love this guy. I love this guy, you know, <laughs> because you do kind of have this. Listen, I think that like talent gets you working and likability keeps you working. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and you there's something and, and I, I don't think you can fake it. Um, and, and, and I know that people, there are a, a rare, uh, breed of people that, that might not be that likable and continue to working that they just have incredible <laughs> talent, but you know what I mean? You, I think uh, that you have this incredible talent and you're also this, uh, incredibly likable guy. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 you know, um, you just got this, I, I don't know. I, and it, I, I've got to imagine it's because you're, you know, you're really a likable guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I want to do, um, I want so I want to talk about you're growing up in New York and then, um, and I know that, you know, because of 
uh, you know, I've done my research on you. I, I know that you, if for, for as far back as you remember, you, you're like, I, I got to be in entertainment. I want to be an actor, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so did you kind of feel like in some ways, like your, like your creative life began at LaGuardia at, at the school? Um, not necessarily. I think, um, it, it, I've always said to folks that I knew at five years old. Yeah. So, um, and I found a home video to confirm it. Uh, my mom showed me a home video when I was, uh, man, I think I saw it for the first time when I was about maybe in my teen years and, uh, I was five and, you know, they had the huge cameras that back in the, in the early eighties, you can like rent. Yeah. And my dad had rented a huge camera and we were making home videos, you know, and, and I told her on the home video, like, I want to do this when I grow up, you know, wow. but pointing to the camera. And so you know, through junior high school, I made it a point to tell mom, okay, I finished fifth grade. I need to find a school that has acting, you know, can we do that? And she did. There was a school in, in Bushwick uh, called Junior High School 162. Okay. And there was a, a, a teacher and I, I really hate the fact that I forgot her name, but she's really sweet. And she was also an actress, obviously. She taught the kids there and um, she had an agent and she would show us uh, her reel, which was like a bunch of Dairy Queen commercials, wow. you know, just a bunch of like her just working, you know, and um, and then she and the guidance counselor there was like, OK, you're finished with eighth grade. What do you want to do? And I'm like, well, there's got to be acting somewhere else in this city. And wow. that's when LaGuardia came into play. And then um, I only auditioned for that school. And uh, I met a really wonderful teacher by the name of James Moody who's an actor, and he was the father. Uh, he played the father in uh, The Last Dragon, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, uh, with Wait, uh, the with, movie- the, With Ty Mac? Ty Mac? With Ty Mac, yeah, yeah. Oh, so shit, he played, I love that he movie. He played his dad, and, and James Moody uh, was the person who saw my audition at LaGuardia and said, okay, I want you in this school. Oh, and, wow. and even more so was like, I also have uh, a musical theater repertory company uh, at the Harold Clerman Theater uh, by 42nd and 8th Avenue. Are you interested? And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know how to dance. I didn't know how to sing. I was just like, but if there's acting there, I'm in. And uh, it was um, it was started by the grandmother on Family Matters, Rosetta Lenoir. Mm. And she would, while she was filming Family Matters, she would travel to New York City and meet us and just like check on us and say, wow. how you kids doing? I mean, this lady just got off of a 12 hour shoot in LA and shows up Saturday morning to say hi to us, you know, and just to say, I love you. And, and I'm spending my own money to make sure you guys learn acting, singing, dancing, you know? Uh, and, and I was just like, that was like my first introduction to like, there are people who who are dedicated to this, you know, mm. much so that they're spending their hard earned money on this, you know, and that was like important for me to realize like, okay, I'm spending my weekends. I'm like 11, 12 years old. I'm about to start, um, I'm about to turn 13 soon. I'm about to start high school. Like, this is like a big deal. Like we got to, you know what I mean? So and yeah. high school for me was great because I think it it kind of taught like the idea of like a conservatory at a very young age. So um, yeah. I didn't know anything about acting, right? I, I, at that time, I didn't know about Meisner. I didn't know about, you know, we learned a lot of uh, uh, Richard Boleslavsky. It was, was, was kind of like the foundation that the school taught us, you know, but yeah. then of course there was like Meisner and, and, and there was like Adler and, and it was everything that the teachers at that school wanted to like, throw at us, you know? Right. Um, and, uh, and I know I just, for me, like I was a sponge. Now I was the, I was still trying to be the cool kid in New York city, you know, <laughs> looking in the biggie smalls and, sure. and, and, and hanging with friends. And maybe I was in the back, but I was still listening, you yeah. know, still yeah. learning, still studying. I was still, you know, um, and school was interesting because I wasn't necessarily like the hot shot, you know, um, actor in the, in the class. I mean, I saw some really talented people in my class who I'm like, there's no way they're not going to work, you know? Um, and 
I don't know, man. It's just like, for me, it was like, it was a no brainer. I knew I'm like, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I know I am, you know, I knew it. So yeah. just, it was just following my intuition and my gut and just keep, and just kept going. And yeah. Uh, yeah and I think like, it just really solidified like my tutelage and just my desire, you know, but yeah. there was a lot more for me to learn that I think school can't teach. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. And that's, when, that's when everything else came into play. Yeah. And it's such a blessing because like, um, you know, well, first, firstly, you know, some people go their entire lives without, um, without tapping into, uh, tapping into the thing, much less being able to make a living at the thing that really gets their fire, their soul on fire, you know? Right. You're right. Um, right. And for you to have that, you know, it almost, I mean, it's such an, uh, you must have had some good parents, you know what I mean? You must have had some, like, uh, I don't know, maybe some divinity in there and some angels that were like, you know, um, because that's a real, that's a blessing, man. You know, and it probably took the edge off some real, some real, you know, growing up is hard. It is. It you is. And, and I've noticed, I've learned through friends and other people that, you know, sometimes it took time for them to figure out what it is that yeah. they and to do or that they want to do what their purpose was. I knew my purpose very early. I'm grateful for that. Um, my journey was more, how can I honor that purpose? And sometimes I may be veered off. Mm -hmm. I may um, sort of not try to squander it, but not, I, I didn't give it my all sometimes. Um, that was my journey. My journey was always like, I'm, you know, how do you honor that purpose? You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. work towards it and work hard for it, you know. Um, but nonetheless, I do think it's a it's a huge blessing, huge blessing to know so yeah. early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, so okay, so you're you're learning, you're you're getting a pretty good foundation at LaGuardia, yeah. and then I, I it looked like you bounce you, you kind of bounced around for a couple of years, got a few important yeah. jobs before you moved to LA, and the was yeah. it like early two thousands? Yeah, two thousand I moved. Yeah. Yeah, in 2000, was, I moved to LA. What was that? I mean, because like, you know, I, I, I was in LA for 25 years. We always looked up to you guys, saying, "No, they're the ones doing the real work." You know, it was like yeah. it was like uh, the you know guys from London and then the guys from New York and then like yeah. the West Coast actors are like, oh. "Fuck, man, I need, yeah. I need to move to New York and do real shit." So what right. made you <laughs> want to move to LA? I guess more opportunity, right? Oh well. Yeah, I guess, a, a, so a buddy of mine who graduated from LaGuardia a couple years before me, uh, he was auditioning as well. And he said, hey, now that you graduated and you've been working, you know, um, let's go to LA. There's, there's, there's more casting directors out there. We can meet more people. Could be more opportunity. Yeah. And I was like, well, I had, the only thing that made it feel safer to do it was I had an agent at the time who also had an office in Beverly Hills. Okay. So I reached out to them and said, I'm thinking about, you know, going to LA. What do you think? They're like, sure. And um, I think I had like $2,700 in my account. And I'm like, yeah. well, it's like, you know, the whole Y2K movement thing of like, yeah. what happened when 2000 happened? <laughs> yeah. And you know what I mean? And like oh, yeah. the whole new internet movement thing. And oh, yeah. And I was just like, well, good things are going to happen because I'm going to LA that we're going to make this. It. So I love it. It was like, Hey, I have a, my buddy used to teach, uh, like the Tybo classes, like the kickbox yeah. classes and stuff like that for like all the gyms. Yeah. So he had made good money doing that in New York. And he was like, one of my clients is going to gift us a car, but we got to go to Vegas to pick it up. And I'm like, Oh wow. The adventure begins. Okay. <laughs> So we get ourselves a flight to Vegas to pick up this car. Um, we touch down Vegas. He gives us this um, this refurbished, like redone buggy. It's yellow, um, brand new engine. Uh, really sweet guy was like, I hope your dreams come true and I want to contribute to that. Here's a car. Cool. Uh -huh. It was stick shift. I didn't know how to drive stick. Neither oh, did shit. Anybody. So we're in a parking lot somewhere trying to learn it before we, so we could drive it to LA. Um, and uh, we're fucking destroying the gears on this shit. Like, <laughs> and it, that's what it, like, 
and, and, and yeah. uh, just like getting destroyed. And I'm like, we need to hit this road. We hit the road. We finally get to LA. He's driving because I'm like, ah, you figure it out. So he get he gets us to LA safely. Um, it, it started raining. Uh, I feel like we were somewhere leaving downtown LA, sort of getting towards like Silver Lake area. Yeah. Uh, on the 101 going south, uh, north. Almost there. Yeah. Going north, right? So we're getting close. We're getting close to Hollywood. Car loses control. <gasps> 360 spin out. Not many cars around. It's pretty late. Thank God. We hit the divider. Car crashes, hits, it gets, it, it spins so hard to the middle of the road. Uh, oh, the no. And uh, shit starts turning on fire. Like the wheels are on fire now. Oh my God. Right. And so now, like, I'm like panicking, like, yo, we got to get our stuff, get our stuff out of here. We got our clothes and, and everything. And, and we're just trying to run to the divider and grab it. Obviously, not get hit by a car while I'm grabbing stuff. And I'm telling them, like, get out of the car. Come on. Let's we gotta leave this, you know? And then, holy shit. And I'm like, we just got to LA and this happens. And I'm like, Bro. oh, man. Like, okay. So, and then we were fortunate enough that we did have friends. We had a, a friend of ours who is also, she was an actor. She was an actress. I don't know if she's still acting, but she was on a, a hit show. Uh, and so she was living in the Valley. Right. So God, we were able to call her and say, Hey, can you come pick us up, please? And she did. And we were able to stay with her, but then we were like bouncing around from hotels and things like Ooh. that in, in Hollywood, just kind of like seedy little places where we were able to save money. Brother, L.A. is not the place you want to be without a car, right? Dude, no, no, <laughs> no. And I, you know, at that time, there obviously was no, like, Apple Maps or anything. So we had what's called a Thomas Guide. Right, right. So the Thomas Guide was how you sort of, if you got an audition, the audition would say, uh, it's at G5 on the Thomas Guide, you know? And then you would just look and be like, oh, G5, oh, oh, oh Culver City. Okay, so then I gotta like take this to get the coke. Got it, you know. And I I tried a couple times on taking the bus to auditions, which was kind of weird. And it yeah. was like it took like because we were staying in the valley, so trying to get to the valley to like Culver City was like Ooh. it was hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was sort of like the introduction. Like, buddy says, let's go to L.A., and I said, cool. And you know, one thing led to another, and then you just sort of like pick up the pieces, you know? But I, now now it makes sense because you, man, when you were going in for those jobs, you needed the fucking job, dude. You were- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you it, were was, like, it was like, it was, it was like, it was like, let's go, you know? Uh, yeah. But also like, there was this like, this confidence though, that I yeah. felt like it was naive and sort of like ignorance is bliss. Like I, I had no idea about the industry. I didn't know much. I think the beautiful thing about growing up in New York was I was surrounded by a melting pot of like artists and, yep. and G and, and growing up in, and, and being in LaGuardia, I was surrounded by artists of all, you know, colors and creeds and religions that were like in it for the work and in yep. it for the art and like, so I was spoiled in like, you know, being around that kind of energy um, where there was no judgment, right? And so no. once I get to to Los Angeles is when I start to feel the criticism, the judgment. The, yeah, yeah. You know, I start to feel the walls, right? Yeah, and I, man. Yeah. And I start to feel like, oh, yeah, I am Puerto Rican and Dominican. Yeah, mm. I, do, I do sound like I'm from New York. Oh, oh, yeah, I didn't graduate college. Okay. Oh, you know, yeah. um, don't come from money. You so those things start to become the those those things start to become in the conversation without being said. Yeah, man. And, yeah. Uh, and so now like, you know, it starts to get interesting. You know, now like you start booking work and you start, you know, you start connecting with people in a way that you like, I've never connected with them that way before. Yeah. And, I was like, okay, is this about the work now? Like, what is this really about now? Interesting. And I think that to me was like the real learning, uh, at least for my journey, was like, that was like a big learning step for me. Cause it, cause it informed how I protected my space in terms of my work. Um, yeah. 
Because I yeah. was so spoiled as a kid, just like we were all like, you know, I'm hanging out with kids from, you know, like LES or like Soho or like Upper East Side. And like all when we just came together, like it didn't yeah. matter. Like yeah. I was poor, they had money, but it was cool. You know? Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. Because it's also like what, like, um, that that thing which um, kind of defines you. You know, when I first, I had a little bit of a, I, 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 I was born in uh, Houston, Texas, and I had a little bit of a Southern accent, right? And then I moved, you know, at 20 to LA, and I'm like, oh, shit. I got to start, I got to get rid of this Texas accent. You know, I know it's a little a different thing, so I'm not trying to compare journeys, but no, like, no, 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 I did it. it. It's embracing the, um, it, it for, so for, for years, I was like, I would, I would see a voice coach and try to get a neutral accent. Then I yeah. see Matthew McConaughey come along and talk like this. And I'm like, shit, you oh, that's the idea to embrace who you are. <laughs> yes, it's true. And I think that was sort of like, and I'm, I think I'm still there. Like, I think, you know, to be perfectly honest, like, I think, you know, we all want to continue to work and we all, you know, want to like be useful and, and have more in the toolbox. Um, and so the idea of like, well, how can I stretch myself so I can do more? Um, and yeah, the idea of voice, you know, but like this notion of like, um, you need to sort of like strip away who you are naturally so that way you can do other things um can sort of like either hinder like the natural thing that you should embrace um and we obviously have seen people do it all the time but i think for me you know that was always the battle was like well um there's certain people who are maybe criticizing me because i sound like i'm from new york and mm -hmm. so i don't sound like i'm educated and good enough in the work that i do so yeah, maybe I should get the voice voice coach mm. and out and strip away that or, you know, so it was always this battle of like, what should I do? Um, and I think at the end of the day, like I, I I believe in God and I just felt like God was always just kind of allowing me to work in a in a space that I had to be in in order to help me to a grow, to stretch me, to get better, and at the same time to embrace who I am because it's like you said, like, you know, when you, you think about someone like Matthew McConaughey, who was able to embrace who he was and be great at what he does, like, I think that's what it's about, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was sort of like, kind of like my journey in the beginning or like, yeah, even, yeah. even not even in the beginning, but just like throughout LA, like living in LA. Yeah, that's interesting. That's wild, you know? And also I, just so you know, from I from my perspective, from the outside looking in, uh, when I started seeing, become aware of you, you know what I mean? Which I think was probably in The Rookie, which I did see in theaters. Also, I was noticing, I was looking up The Rookie Dude. So here's this movie. You guys did this. Dennis Quaid made $80 million, right? Yeah. Fucking <laughs> kind of a little bit of a hit, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to show you how much the landscape has changed, yeah. a movie like that, you know what I mean? Today. Yeah. Yeah. Private. Oh, let's maybe it'll get distributed with vertical or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, 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 a great movie. I love that movie. Dude. I it's love a, that movie. It's such a it's such a great film. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean Brian Cox and you know Rachel Griffiths and and yeah. you know just so many good actors. Got heart, right? It just yeah, it just it was just. I think it's one of those films. I mean, I feel like they don't really necessarily make those films anymore. No, you know, like no. the idea of like. You know, a good story, um, uh, great actors, um, the budget is at a certain level, you know, so yep. you can keep it at a certain place and then it it just it, it can flourish, you know, and then it has the legs for that. Like I did. I, I did. So that one in Coach Carter was sort of like. Sports films at a certain budget. Yeah, that yep. twenty million dollar budget around. Yeah. So like done at a certain budget, like. um are successful and they they have legs and and sort of like the idea is like when they stream or when they you buy them on DVD back then it was like DVD then like there was other life for it as yeah. well so yeah yeah oh I mean God. that was great man and you know he he was he was really gracious that guy I mean he was going through a lot at that time but he was gracious you know and he was really chill and the director or Dennis 
uh, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and was... and I think like I think he um, he, like that was my first time. I think that was like my first time really up close working with you know someone that I grew up watching you know uh, as a kid you know in in huge films being such a a big movie star and like seeing someone and how they conduct themselves and you know their whole process and I sort of ingest you know it's just all like osmosis and sponging it up and just seeing yeah. Like, okay. Which works well for 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 being a, a member of a team and what you know what I mean you yeah. that's like you're kind of well seated to do both right to learn yeah. from the actor and to be in the character right hundred percent yeah would you would you would you consider that I'm, listen I I understand that this fucking business is just a series of of breaks or big breaks and it's like well that was a break but now we're four years later but would you consider that like your your first break in L A so. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I distinctly remember John Lee Hancock who directed the yep. rookie. Um, we were on set in Austin and I never forget it. He was just like, I'm going to make sure the world knows who you are when we shoot this film. Like, you know, and like, I'm, I'm like brand new, you know, like, it, you know, I've, yeah, I've done some things before, nothing at this level at all. Yeah. Yep. And I knew the significance of booking this film auditioning for it um and so when i got it and he you know when you get those confirmations or those affirmations yeah. rather you know um it it, it kind of like it sinks in like okay this this could be this is definitely the start of something yeah man yeah and also there's no one like there was no one like you man you were just so going back to you know hey you talk about this kind of internal battle, you know, with the stripping, stripping away or leaning into going back to what my perspective was. My perspective was like, who the fuck is this guy? There's no one like this guy. You know what I mean? Uh, and then uh, and then you go on to do old school, which is within a couple of years of that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You run a show of that. Yeah. I mean, um, that was that was uh i remember auditioning for that as well like about three or four auditions uh for todd phillips and um i remember seeing jeremy piven come in uh an audition like or not, maybe not audition i think he was just having like meetings with with yeah. todd phillips so i would see him drive in and i'd be like that guy looks important you know <laughs> great, yeah. great looking car coming in and like you know yeah like this really cool jeep you know and we were all just like we were all like cattle, just like waiting for our turn to go back in and audition. Um, and uh, and I just think like, I didn't understand the significance of auditioning for that film. I didn't, I didn't get it. And um, I, I didn't watch a lot of Saturday Night Live, so I didn't know Will Ferrell's work that well. Yep. Um, and I think his first film with, um, Chris, I forget his last name, uh, from SNL as well. Mm, yeah. Night, the night something, I think it was he had he had that film out already. Okay. Uh, so doing doing that film was sort of like, I think we sort of naturally built a fraternity because there was a lot of actors uh who went on to do a lot of great things uh in terms of the uh the fraternity we built in the film. Uh and uh, you know, uh, and I and I felt like we sort of bonded like that. You know, we had Patrick Adams, we had uh, Simon Simon Helberg is what his I think is his name from uh, uh, Big Bang Theory. Um, yeah, um, we had Rob Corddry there as well. Um, so we just had like a bunch of us, like just you know, just like you know new to either new to the game or been putting a lot of years in the game and just like you know and we just coming together and so the film was more about just us hanging out watching yeah. guys like kill it you know and i'm looking at will and i'm just i remember one day i walked up to him and i'm like how do you do this like because it was take after take of like i mean he should they should give awards for this like this oh, is dude. Like yeah. brilliant shit yeah. you know and i'm and then my mind i'm like I don't know how they can decide because he just gave us four takes <laughs> of like brilliant. 
Yeah. And, you, gotta, uh, you guys bust, you gotta have like moments of just busting out. Ruin takes. There's a lot of times we ruined it because I'm like, you can't make me stand straight and just take that abuse from him and not laugh. Like, and he would just sometimes just like, Will would just rip into us randomly. Like all of like when, cause when he decided to be the enforcer uh, and like really like give us the juice and we just had to stand there and take it. And I remember we had this really sweet actor named Abdul who was Indian. Yep, yep. He spoke any English and Abdul just had this great smile cause his teeth, his teeth yeah. were so big, but he was yeah. smiling. You would see his teeth when he smiled. You know what I mean? He had his big glasses. Yeah, yeah. He would so just good. take the ass whooping. You yeah. would just you yeah. know what I mean? We just be yeah. looking at Abdul like, ah, man, I'm laugh right now, man, because he just, because I know his little sweetheart was like, I'm, I'm trying to laugh and I don't want to laugh, and you know, um, and we just have many takes like when, when Will's like twirling the thing, and, and I'm just like, or in the locker when he's just beating the shit out of the locker, dude. It's just like, what are we doing? Like, oh so that God. was just like, I like master class, like. I got front row seats to like what improv looks like, like, and I just took it. Yes, it's like. And, and you have a, 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 you're, you have a child. And, and, and mm-hmm. how old is she now? What she ten? She's Eleven. Eleven. Have Have you kind of let her see some scenes from this? You know, uh, no, she hasn't seen anything I've done. Oh. So she uh she hasn't asked. You yeah. know, I definitely don't want to like. Yeah. I'm not. Oh, you need to watch dad's films. You know, she's like, <laughs> she, she's aware, you know, her friends are like, oh, your dad's this guy. And yeah. she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I think, I don't know, my wife and I talk about it and we're actually cool. We we like that she doesn't really want to, she has no interest yet. I think when she gets a little older, like somehow, some way, like it'll happen. And, you know, oh, it'll happen, brother. I I have so many friends. Yeah. Who- who um who are the uh child of actors right yes and they mm-hmm. all tell me the same story like I, I, one of my best friends is is a, an actor named Sam Daly his dad was Tim Daly from Wings or is oh, Tim Daly yeah. from Wings right wow. yeah and uh and I, I ask him two questions because much like a lot of my other actors with kids I, I, I like ask like this is your is your kid kind of completely unimpressed with you know, your career as well? And and he's like, uh, like, and then but my buddy says, yeah, uh, like growing up, I just thought that everyone's parents were actors, everyone's mm-hmm. parents were on TV, you know, because that's the only wow. reality I had. And wow. then two, uh, and and two, he's like, that's the last thing I wanted to do when I when I saw like the the highs and the lows, I'd be like, that sounds like a headache, man, you know. And then in college, he, of course, he calls calls his mom and dad and said, I think I'm going to uh, switch my major to theater. Wow. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of cool. Like she's like, I'm, you know, we don't want to force it. We just like, if she asks, then there's a couple films we might be able to show her like that are appropriate. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah you can watch this, you know? Yeah. Um, the rookie but, being one of them. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like, look, it, you know, if she ends up in college someday. She'll be on the couch one day and like, yeah, yeah. Netflix my dad's film and yeah. see what the hell the ruckus is. All That's about. cool, man. It's yeah. better that way, right? It's better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so I want to talk. We we might have talked a little bit about this, but like the um, the um, the importance of reinvention as an artist, because it seems like there's been a couple of of distinct reinventions for you and i didn't know if that was just like an organic thing or like a decision Mm. one being you know you cut your hair you know what i mean another being when you get jacked (laughs) are these kind of like benchmarks you're like no no this is kind of a a conscious decision or kind of just like or something that had to do with you and 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 the the uh considering it from the perspective of of an actor was secondary um, I think the the haircut was uh, a conscious decision. Um, yeah. that, so I cut my hair after, I want to say after old school, there was like a year. Yep. I didn't work for that entire year. I cut my hair. It was like this short and I yeah. cut it. I think this was like 04 or 03, 03 yeah. maybe. And I didn't work for a whole year. It was like, oh boy. Um but it, like, 
I, I get after after I let my hair grow out again, um, I think I finished I had did a uh, Reaper. I was on Reaper for yep, yep. A, a couple seasons on CW and my hair was uh in a bun. It was like a long bun. Like I would just like put it back. Yeah. Up. I was like, I'm gonna do that. And then uh and all of a sudden I'm like, nah, I don't want the bun no more. I'm cutting it off. Um and I was conscious. And then uh, fast forward to, I auditioned for Arrow, and uh, they don't tell you that you're auditioning for a character, right? And that was my first time introduced into the whole like, hey, we have to hide this from the fans because they right. they can find out what you're reading for. So I thought I was just reading for like a soldier named Jason Seaborn who was being court-martialed. Right. And so um, I ended up getting Jason Seaborn, who was court-martialed. So I'm like, cool, like I'm on Arrow. This is an action show, like, but I don't need to get jacked. I don't need to do none of that. Like, I just, it's going to be for like a week. I'm going to shoot right. in Vancouver for one week and then we're out of here. And then that turned out to be Wild Dog. They didn't say. Yeah, yeah. I got to like, until I booked the job and then the cat costume designer told me, you're playing Wild Dog. So then, and then that became Four Seasons. But right. that was the reason why I got in shape was because when I got it and they told me Wild Dog, it was like, well, then now I have to get in shape. And then that was sort of like, I can't let this go. Like, I kind of yeah. got it to like working out and sort of like yeah. physique, you know? Yeah, um, that's 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 committed, commitment, man. Not a lot of people, a lot of people know the path, but they don't take it, even as actors, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know? I just uh, felt like, mm, it's time. It's time to like, you know, kind of stick with it and yeah. you know, get to it. So yeah, yeah. So that was just kind of like my thing was like, I like this. I like I like working out now. Um yeah. I'm, it's tough, but <laughs> it's like I love that I can at least be dedicated to to a new thing, you know, something that forces me to find this discipline, you know, uh, which I love doing, you know. Uh Music has always been another discipline that I've loved to like tap into. Uh, so it was always like finding the time to like give myself to that. And I feel like working out is the same thing. It's like, I'm showing up for myself. I'm showing up. I don't, I didn't like it in the beginning, but I love the results. I love seeing the results. I love seeing like, okay, I can stick to this and see it. And so that was sort of like, Arrow sort of gave me that, you know, it sort of gave me that. That's gift. great. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. do this. Yeah, you know, I uh, I know about your you know your 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 love for hip hop and your history and your and your work as a hip hop artist. Um, I remember, uh, God, I don't know when this was, but I you know I must have been maybe ten, you know, and I remember on the side of the road in Houston, I found this mixtape, right, um, um, and uh, it said N.W.A. on it, and then I first song I heard was uh, Gangsta Gangsta, and it was all the whole you know it was a whole album, and I remember. Rick, I remember my mind being fucking blown because first I was thinking, what is this sound? You know what I mean? Um, and then secondly, I was thinking, how are these guys? I was thinking, how are these guys committing all these crimes and then talking about it? I didn't even like, like, I thought, aren't they incriminating themselves? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, and I, and I was introduced to gangster rap and that sent me on this, this obsession and love, you know, and then being from Houston, we didn't have a lot of people to claim for our own until the ghetto boys came on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I and, love uh, the ghetto boys. Oh wow. man. Yeah, oh, and then I, you know, so I, I went on to become buddies with uh, Willie D. Um, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, acquaint. Well, I'd say acquaintances, but Love it. Um, yeah, man. So, how I, I do this thing uh, uh, the last couple of years where I'll soundtrack a character, right? Mm. And I'm wondering, you know, like how does does music come into your process with character work at all? Oh, deeply, yeah. Uh, I've been using heavy with Bobby Reyes heavy. Um, I'll put together a playlist for him. Nice. Uh, and there'll be playlists for like certain scenes too. Like a scene will get a playlist and then I'll sort of like use that um, yeah. right before I shoot. Yeah. Or it'll be like for rehearsal with myself. I'll listen to it and then I'll start reading the scene. Um, I love it. You know, um, Last season was big for me in terms of using it because we introduced uh, 
sort of the the messiness of Bobby Reyes and his yep. love affair with Jet. Yep. Uh, and so the there were some. Yeah, so I sort of had to use music for that, like to get yep. me in that place of like, okay, where where is he? You know. Yep. Um, and so I love music so much. I think it it really informs inform informs what I do. Um, and you know. Yeah, it just sort of like it it's it definitely helps me to unlock things like to get there, you know. Um I'm also very visual. Like I feel like for me, sometimes um audio things don't don't work sometimes. So like I need a visual. So it could be a photo, it could be yep, a video, yep. oh, it could yep. be, you know, um <laughs> I sort of save things like sometimes I'll save things on Instagram. I'll see it and I'm like, Ooh, yep. and I'll save that, you know, same brother. Same. If it, if it, if it emotes something like, uh, yeah, same dude, I saw something yesterday that was, Ooh, it was this girl on, Amer on like America's got talent and she was dying mm -hmm. of cancer. Uh, <sighs> her name was black, uh, um, um, something bird or something. Uh, I feel bad. Not remember her name. And she had a 2% chance to live. And she sang this song called I'm okay. And I, I was like, I lost yeah. it. I yeah. lost it. I'm like, I got to like, cause there's times I'm like, man, I know I got this access. And, but there's times when I'm like, when I'm there and I show up to the day and I've done all this work and I feel like, I feel like, oh my God, I can't access this emotional. Yeah. Like, I know yeah. it's there. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's, it the, is. That's it the is. No, it, it's true, man. It's like, <clears throat> um, I think that's where music sort of helps, you know, it just, yeah. And even like when I don't have to get so emotional, but like moments where I just want to like, I just want something to like inform the energy that my character's in. And I know it'll be present because yep. I'm, I'm using this music to like, you know, really bring him to this energy. So yeah, that's it, man. Cause you can't, you, you, you can't act words. You can act emotions. You can mm. act vibes. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It doesn't really, I mean, it matters what you say, but it, it really matters yeah where you're at and and that's that it took me a long time to to really understand that i'm still learning i'm still learning that yeah I yeah mean, bro, like you know i always mm -hmm. say acting things like wrestling an alligator you know what i mean like can you really pin that thing down no yeah man it's, it's it's stronger than you it's more powerful like you know i'm i'm constantly trying to render it and under my control and you know, it's, it's impossible, you know what I mean? So I just sort of like try to go with the flow sometimes. I I try to use preparation to try to like, you know, grasp it. Um, but I think like the older I get, man, the more freer I feel like where I'm like, mm. I don't care about this idea in my head of how I want it to come out, you know? Right, I think that's great. I sort, of, I, I sort of want to be loyal to, I want to be loyal to the work that I put in for the character, um, you know, and everything that has to be there to tell the story. And then whatever comes out of that, I want to be, I would be gracious to it, you know, and just be like that. Yeah. that and I feel like, I feel at more at peace that way. Yeah, you man. Know, or, more authentic, you know. honest. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so invariably the, the best moments when you reflect back upon a scene are the accidents, right? Yeah. Which you, you couldn't have happened, which wouldn't have happened without the work you put in, right? Yeah. Um, and sort of letting it go, you know, just sort of letting it go. You know, I think um, there are times on set where I love, where I'm like, I'm not even thinking anymore. It's just, you know, I'm, you know and then um, you sort of like, I mean, I don't watch the stuff that I do anymore, but like when I did and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Like, you know, it, and I know why, because I wasn't thinking about the next moment, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Uh, that's, that's, um, I get that, man. It seems like the more I care, the less I want to watch because the more expectation is built upon. Also, we it, it, oftentimes on a lot of things we shoot, you know, um, it, it, I know it's a little different on network TV, but a lot, you know, that we, that we, but, you know, I shot this show Lady in the Lake two years ago. I forgot, I forgot everything. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, damn. I, that, so that gave me a lot of angst. To like, uh, was I any good? Did I know how to act <laughs> two years ago? <laughs> you know, um, I, I, 
Uh, you've been so gracious with your time, and, and, and but I, well, I got to jump back real quick and tell you that uh, Pride and Glory, I loved you. This was right around that time. Oh yeah, I yeah. Thought to myself, oh, dude, that's the that's the guy that was doing the funny thing. That's now playing this fucking like really dangerous dude with Colin yeah. Farrell, man. Yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, that's the rain. I mean, that's it. That's the both sides of the spectrum. You know what I mean? Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you bro. I mean, I you know. <clears throat> I feel like to me, that was always like my like, like, man, I want to be able to do everything on this side and I want to be able to do everything on that side, you know? Um, yeah, I would love to play, you know, an English Brit, you know, like some like, you yeah. know, uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but you know what I mean? But like for me, like um being able to like at least tackle comedy and then be able to do drama was like always the goal you know yep yep yeah and <clears throat> and i love you know like that i could go toe to toe with people you know and i think to me that was always like you know you just like you stand your ground you know what i mean and bring your you bring yeah. your your a game so that way you can spar with people and have fun and um yeah and i think that was always like the goal was like you know, show up, you know, sure. and, yeah. and let's kill it, you know, make I, them, make them have to compete with you. You know, yeah. you know yeah. just really sort of like say I'm here, you know, yeah. when, uh, and I want to play with you. Yeah. I want to yeah. play. You know, um, yeah. So that was, that was, that was sort of the mindset, you know, it was like, let's do this. Let's have fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Why do I feel like that there's a, a script somewhere uh, where a scene in the first act has uh, has a young you ride into L.A. with his car burning down, like <laughs> that. If not, there should be. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if you've written that, but you, you should. Know, it's, yeah. It was it was wild, man. But yeah, yeah, you know, it it just you need those moments, right? Yeah, fuck need, yeah. yeah, you need those moments. So I, I forgive me, and I, I'm not asking you to. Uh, if this is public knowledge or not, or if you're not allowed to tip your hand, but are you, are you back for this season or do we not, are we not, do we not? Know yeah, that? we're back. Yeah, definitely back. Yeah. So you're, and you're, you're, you're okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back okay. for the season. We'll, we start sh soon. We'll you start. took a little leave of absence story-wise, right? Well, it was, it was at, just for like two episodes last season. And okay. then, and then Bobby came right back. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And yeah. yeah. So it was just last season was, uh, Last season had this sort of arc with with uh, Stabler's like family and like yeah. we sort of dived into this world of what he's going through. So we're gonna we're gonna definitely because we we got loose ends that yeah. need to be tied up. So we yeah, dive yeah. Right back to that. Yeah, so be good. Good man. Good, good, good. And you have you guys have you have you moved back to New York? I am in New York. Yep, back in New York. But are you uh, like are you you is you and your your tribe are back in New York? Well, the the tribe the tribe is still in L.A. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'm asking if you claim New York home. Oh, I, all the time, yeah. And okay, and okay. I, and I, I have, yeah. I mean, we I will always plant roots here. Like, yeah, the, yeah. they're still planted here. So, yeah, um, yeah. But like home, I feel like home has to be L.A. because the tribe is there. Yeah, wherever know? they're at. But, right. So home is where the tribe is. But my heart obviously is still in New York and being here and. I haven't been back to New York like this in a really long time. Like yeah. in terms of working on something of this, you know, uh, long, uh, and, and here, you know, cause I feel like everything sort of takes me away, like either to Canada or like, you yeah. know, or some other state. So it's just rare that I'm in New York like this. So, yeah, but I'm here, I'm here, dude. Do you, um, do you, uh, I know we just got a couple more minutes with you, but do no, you, no, take it yeah, off. yeah. Do you, um, do you like just decompress in your off time on this show because it's so rigorous? You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, are you necessarily like, oh no, I gotta get, I gotta mix it up, do something else? Are you like, nope, I'm done until we go back, until I find out if we're going back? Or, I, I, I mean, yes and no. Like, it depends. Uh, I feel like I'm always, I want to do other things. You yeah. know what I mean? So there, there is the idea of like if something comes along and I'm like, Oh no, I have to do that. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. But I do realize that being burnt out, you know, is, is a thing. So, um, 
I think for me though, like I've always had this notion of like work begets work, you know, yeah. and um, that was sort of my motto in the beginning was like, hey, destroy and kill everything you get your hands on, like, you know, try to leave your mark, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then and then it sort of morphed into um when Chadwick Bozeman died, it was sort of more more and I sort of learned, oh, there is the science to like sort of finding a bullseye and mm. want to just throw the darts at the bullseye. And um uh, and that's what I learned when he passed away was like he had a bullseye. He had an idea of like where he was headed. Whereas like I didn't have necessarily an idea, like I knew um what I wanted in terms of, but I didn't necessarily like define it. No. Um, and I didn't define it from my team or anyone. It was just sort of like permeating in my sort of like ethos of me. Yeah. And, then, and then when he passed away, it sort of made me realize like, it made me like define it now, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I see it now. Like, yeah. you know, um, so now I'm sort of like, uh, I'm wanting to be more select selective. I'm wanting yeah. to be more like mindful and present about, do I want to do this? Is it, is, is this, does this match the bullseye that I have for myself? Um, and so that's sort of been like, I, you know, like things change, you know, like, and I think for me that that was like a big deal and it was sort of like an indictment on like, not to say that, how I thought was wrong, but just to sort of say, well, what about this though? Yeah. You know, what yeah. about in it this way? You know? Yeah. It's like that, that it was profound for me. And so, um, yeah. So that's where I'm sort of like at now. So when it comes to like, what else are we going to do during the season or after the season, you know, just sort of like the idea of like, does this, does this, um, lend, lend itself to the bullseye that I have for myself? Like, the target, you know? Um, so, but I personally feel like I would, I, I don't mind doing stuff, you know, after the season's done because yeah. I just keep, I just want to keep working. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And for me, it w it's been like, um, for me, it's been like uh, my my journey was like for so many years because I, I started working kind of late, you know? Um, mm. And uh, so many years, I, I I leveraged all my current day happiness with when I got that thing, when I got got on that big studio movie or whatever. You know, what I mean? even though I, I I never had a lot of landscape on on in, on these big studio movies, but like like and and then I got a, a rude awakening when I first did something where I was away a while, I was getting paid okay, and then I realized, oh, I see. This is important, but it's not everything. You know what Man. I mean? Uh, it always needs to sit. It could be, you know, almost the most important. But as long as it sits sits uh, about the number three spot behind my 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 girl and my son, yeah. that's good. I mean, yeah. Maybe four friendships. And <laughs> <laughs> I agree, man. I agree. I mean, you know, we all have to have something that you know. I mean, it's it's my purpose, and I love acting, but being a dad. Yeah. Um, husband, you know, uh, and my faith really like, I, you know, my yeah. faith is super important to me. Um, it's been the most important thing to me. And, um, and I just feel like that sort of informs and it keeps everything where it should be, you know, yeah. where, yeah. um, and I just, you know, I, I've learned that like, I, I love music. Like I said, I said, I love music so much. So to me, like, I don't want to wait around the phone. I'm done doing that. I'm done, right. you know, uh, feeling like I have to wait for this thing from the industry or for, for the career in yep. order to feel yep. like, you know what I mean? So for me, it's always been about how can I be creative on my own? Yep. You know, how can I feel, f feed my soul, um, stay creative, you know, be at peace, you yep. know, where I am in my life. And I feel like, you know, that's what I do with music, you know, and I, and I just do that and I make it and, and I, you know, and I feel like at the same time, like, you know, being a dad and a husband is, is more than enough on my plate, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think like 
it's like you said, you you hit it on the head, brother. You know, it's yes. just, you know, it, it sort of gives it the perspective that it deserves. Yep. 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 And and you know, there's nothing worse than being away from home and getting that like getting being on the phone and hearing something's not right with your girl and uh, you know your kids in the background and she's trying to be strong for you you know like there's a pair like so i we got to the point where i won't miss you know i you know like a, a, a couple years in a row like i had a i i had to like shoot like maybe on or right around my son's birthday and i was like mm-hmm. I, I know I'm not missing my kid's birthday, you know, so there's a couple of, you know, I, maybe not a shoot day, but maybe like a rehearsal day. I was like, I, I had to be like, listen, I know I'm in this scheme of things. I'm not that important, but I, I will, I'm going to fly home uh, on a red eye on Friday night. I'm going to go to my kid's birthday and I'll be back on Sunday. If you can't make that work, I understand, you know? Yeah, no, that's uh, perfect. Yeah. And like, okay, yeah. we'll fly you home. <laughs> I love that. I Listen, brother, I'm uh, I, I'm such a fan, uh, and I'm so grateful for you doing this, man. It means a lot. It was it lived up to my expectations, and I really appreciate you doing it, brother. Oh, thank you for having me. This was fun, man. This is I love you doing. I love that you're doing this, bro. This is like good talk. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you talk, man. you know, and yeah. the real nitty gritty. I love it, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, then thank you, man. Thank you for being so uh, gracious on on your your show when I came to a guest star, and thanks for. Oh. Thanks for entertaining me for decades, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not old. I love brother. it. I love All it. All right, man. man. God bless, Thank brother. Yo, Talk soon. Peace, All right. Yo. Bye-bye.